Okay, we're going to start looking at albedo, and we're looking at this with regards to IV geography and the effect it might have on climate change and global warming. All right, so when we're looking at albedo, what we're looking at is a measurement. So you usually see a number, it might be a percentage or not. Okay, so we're looking at how or a measurement of how reflective the Earth's surface is. So the reflectance of solar energy from the Earth's surface is what we're really looking at here. So what we're really looking at is the human activities that we've seen really since industrialization, rapid urbanization has been occurring in particular in low income countries. So what we're doing is we're changing the nature of the surface. Now remember, we talk about human activities, we use that word anthropogenic, all right? So human related changing the nature of the surface. So you can see in the image here, we've got ash belt, it's quite dark, changing the nature of the surface. So a lot of construction in urban areas, you can see in this image here, there's a lot of tall buildings, they're dark, all right? So again, this might be concrete, this might be ash belt, which is quite dark and will absorb a lot of the incoming solar radiation. So if I talk about something that is dark, then what we're doing is we're talking about something that has a very low level of albedo in terms of the measurements, all right? That means it will absorb a lot of the incoming solar radiation. Okay, now it'll absorb it during the day, okay, and it will retain it, and it will start releasing this as long wave radiation in the late afternoon. So again, think about the urban areas around you. You might see more car parks. These car parks take up a lot of space. They're dark in nature, often made of ash belt, all right? So again, changing the nature of the surface through our human-induced activities, so anthropogenic, is lowering the level of albedo, all right? So again, what we've started to see is rapid urbanization, in particular low-income countries, but over a period of time in urban areas, uh, again, darker, all right, lowering the albedo level, absorbing more, later on releasing it as long-wave radiation. All right, so I can look at the Earth's surface. Can I see different levels? If I talk about Snow, you can see with the four arrows there, it has much higher level of albedo, so that means more will be reflected. So really what we're talking about is keeping the Earth's energy balance all in check, all right? So we talk about greenhouse gases being released into the atmosphere, trapping long-wave radiation, but we must also remember when we're talking about climate change and warming things up, we're also talking about the implications that we have created through changing the color of the Earth's surface as well, all right? So again, if I've got something that is fresh snow, uh, I could be looking around about 75, 80% in terms of reflectivity, all right? Now again, if I look at Antarctica and I look at our human activities, what we're actually doing is we're seeing glaciers mounting. Um, again, I can refer to Antarctica. If I start having glaciers mounting or snow mounting, what I'm seeing below this is much darker, all right? And this is a huge problem later on. We're talking about the energy balance here, all right? So I'm exposing through the snow melting or the glaciers melting a much darker surface here, all right? So that's a problem. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to upset the energy balance, all right? Now, traditionally, we talk about climate change, global warming. We talk about, as I said earlier, just the greenhouse gas emissions, all right? But we must remember this part of it as well, how we are altering the surface and the level of albedo. Traditionally, generally, we're making it lower, all right, which absorbs more and releases more long-wave radiation late in the afternoon and evening, all right? That's where you need to focus on here with regards to climate change.